Oh, whatever. All right, what's up, everybody? We're just going to do a very short, um, just a very short, I don't know how short. Welcome, Lou. So this is uh, Take Back Our Chicago. We meet every other Saturday, normally at 11 o'clock, but today we met on Sunday because Norman Swenson, and God rest his immortal soul, died. He was the founder of the Cook County College Teacher Union, public sector unions in the state, and also he's the reason we have tenure, so we honor him today. But what Tim is going to talk about are his experiences with mutual aid and asylum seekers. Um, and so it's a short group today, but you know, um, I think I'm going to post this on YouTube on Radical Books and Activists so people have access to it. And, and if you need to use this as a resource, by all means, uh, yeah, take it away, brother. Thank you. Um, there's been a worldwide, uh, uh, and it's historic, in regards to the treatment of migrants uh, throughout the world. Uh, as recent as uh, in June 29th, there was uh, Britain was was have, had a plan to send migrants uh that come to Britain, to uh, to Rwanda. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, there were 150 people killed on the Yemen and Saudi border. Uh, in just last week uh, in Israel, uh, there was uh, police cra clashes with the Eritreans. And of course, we have, um, uh, last night we had an issue here in Chicago in regards to a mom wanting to use the bathroom that, um, that our black and brown people and those without homes are being treated as inhuman. They're they're being victims of of the system, and um, and there there are just the way that we've all came to this country is through by by boat, by plane, or by foot. This has been going on for at least in Chicago for the asylum seekers has been going on for a year and we're seeing more and more people uh, come here to Chicago. Now these are based on policies that have been occurring for over the years uh, through through the 80s, through the 90s, into the 2000s in regards to the propping up of, of governments, of oppressive governments that have now caused uh, the people to leave. It's it's kind of like what you would refer to as the chicken coming home to roost in that case. So I uh, I believe that uh, that it's really about how our policies and how our our government treats other countries as pawns to as as a profit. So I I believe that we're going we're going to see much more of this until we start seeing each other as brothers and sisters. So uh, that being said, uh, we're, I'm first generation. Uh, both my parents came from Ireland. Um, and I believe that we're all here together and that we're all in order to be able to, uh, to, 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 we need to sympathize with everybody who comes here because they could be our parents and mothers and fathers coming here. So uh, I started off a mutual aid group uh, back during the pandemic. Uh, we were, Right, we were lo losing people. Uh, people were losing their jobs. Uh, people didn't have aid. They didn't have support systems. Again, uh, this wasn't the, our government currently is not set up to have a. Their capitalist society does not have the 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 structure to handle when people are get lose their jobs and that, and then they they they're marginalized. Now, in regards to how people are treated, um, that our own people, uh, the legacy people here in the United States versus people coming from other countries, there has been a um, divide that's been created, a narrative that it's a, a brown versus black uh, situation. And really these are the needs that both countries are dealing with. Now you see a lot of times with um, in, in black leaders saying, we've been asking for these things and now they're coming into fruition because they're the migrants. And why couldn't we get access to them? And so they're, they're building that narrative and it's, it's wrong and it's inhumane and it's, and it's, uh, it needs to change. Now, currently, um, the, the situation is they're going to, there's discussion of this last week about having 10 cities throughout the city. And, it it would harkens back to what you would see the Japanese internment camps of of what we're looking at for for our for our people coming to this country. Now, when you think of America, you don't think of ten cities. You don't think of hundreds of people in the police station lobby. You don't think of uh, people who are um, who are 
walking the streets because they fell out of the system. Because this is a legacy that as a mutual aid group and as many other volunteers is that we need to make sure that we get all these, the, all get the people that are the asylum seekers, the respect and dignity they deserve to be able to stand on their feet because these, this is America. These people coming here, these, this is America. We're not all Native Americans. We're not, so we are all immigrants and therefore we need to make sure that we give the best step forward because we're, we're affecting the current generation of the people coming, their children generation, and then children and children that we have not met yet, that there, this is a ripple effect that if we do and just restore dignity and, and be able to give them what they need to survive, to survive and thrive, we will then pay, pay the dividends we paid for many, many generations. So I believe with, with how the, how we should approach how we should approach the the this event is that not just in a silo thing of the migrant crisis but is a holistic way of being able to make sure that we have that no one is left behind nobody falls through the cracks now it seems like um that since you know the 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 migrants coming from Venezuela, majority from Venezuela, some from Angola, some from other different places, this actually becomes an international problem. And where this problem is, does the same, we have that same issue here locally, but yet that is not an international problem and therefore doesn't feel like it falls into a federal issue. But this is a United States problem. This is a problem that we need to make sure that we take care of our most vulnerable people, be it, the, you know, the children, the mothers, the elderly, that we don't have a, a, a system to be able to take care of them. There is a, um, back in 1995 in Chicago, where we had all those people who dying, it just because there just wasn't a system for, and, the, and there was a heat wave in 1995, and there was uh, hundreds of people who died. I, I don't have the numbers on me, but there are hundreds of people who died. And as a result of the, um, of the heat wave that went through but why did they uh die why was the why are the do you hear stories of elderly who won't turn on the heat you hear these stories is because they don't have enough money they're worried about the next meal they're worried about making sure to be able to take care of themselves beyond tomorrow and that they try to make uh some sort of uh weird sort of algebra to be able to say if i could maybe not take as much medicine, I'll be able to have some heat. Well, if I can't, if I don't have some heat, I'll be able to medicine. You know, this is a first, it's supposed to be a first world country and we're supposed to be a world-class city. And we need to make sure that we take care of our people. And this may seem like a radical idea, but I don't believe it's a radical idea whatsoever. It's a human idea. I don't think that that people are numbers. You know, um, I think uh, as Stalin said, he said, you know, about when one person dies is a tragedy. When you have thousands of people die, it's, it's statistics. And now that's a cruel thing to be said, but it's true. I mean, even today, if you hear about the um, the earthquakes in Morocco, you don't hear about who died. You hear now we're at 2000 people who died, you know, so we don't have those life stories. But there is a life story with each and every person. And what we're trying to do is retain that dignity, retain that life story, and make that an American story. So uh, in regards to uh, to what we do in the mutual aid group, we, we, we provide, um, I, I lead up a District uh, 22 in Morgan Park in Chicago, and we have uh, currently 54 people, and we're supposed to get... Um, a bus load of 232 people come to Chicago. We're not sure if we're going to get any of those people, but we'll there will be spread across the city. We're get, we provide meals. Uh, the city provides a dinner. We provide breakfast and lunch seven days a week for for 54 people every day. I've got up to 69, and now we're back to 54. But these people are humans. They're they're as they're they're just as human as you and I. And they are just as need, their needs are just as important. They're the cruel travel tra track they made here to the United States from going through um, 
through Panama, through through the Darien Gap, and then going in through Mexico and traveling on what they refer to as the Beast, which is a train where you would be reminiscent of the 30s or with the hobos jumping up on the trains. That's how people have to go. And that saves them time to be able to get onto the road. That train doesn't stop for you. It just goes and, and people pile on. And that's how they make the journey. You know, so when people ask, oh, they're illegal or though they're um, how come they can't wait, you know, do the paper proper work, proper paperwork. They can't. You know, there, there's for one, there's an emergency. Nobody wants to leave their home. These people are now have become untethered, you know, because their home is back in in, in Venezuela or, or in Angola or wherever it happens to be. When you have untethered people, they there is a loss of hope because they don't have the background, the firm, the terra firma where which to stand upon. Whereas we need to have them to know that you could count on us. And in order to count on us, then if you can't count on people, then it reduces people into a uh, need to be able to, uh, to be able to, uh, sorry, uh, it reduces people into almost an animalistic behavior of being able to hoard, to be sure that they're able to take care of themselves uh, in the future and their children. So they, they want to make sure that we are um, be able to make sure that they, we are able to treat them as the dignity of humans they are. I apologize about the beeping that keeps on going on. That's the WhatsApp We group can't that... hear it, bro. We can't hear it all. Oh, good, good, good. Because it's about what, 25 of them. It's, uh, they're all in regards to uh, this events so anyway so what um so about bringing people coming here and becoming uh rich and uh beautiful wonderful citizens as we all would like to people as, as we all are to make sure that we make sure that our government and our our fellow man be able to take care of them and again this isn't just united states issue as i had mentioned in the beginning we had saudi arabia we have israel we have um uh, Britain. And now, Armano, you're missing one of my favorite examples. Sorry, I'm going to take privilege. Ireland is a beautiful example. May I? Oh, sure. Ireland is currently taking in uh, immigrants from uh, Ukraine and putting them in hotel rooms. Come on now. If they can do it, why can't we? Right? For reals. So your country is, I love Ireland. I love everything Irish, but dude, there's a special place in my heart for Ireland because of that. Because they're not being run by Tories either. We had this conversation earlier. Um, England and, and other countries not doing so well. The United States not doing so well at all. Sorry, sorry, thought I mentioned. No, no it's it's um, the, the just the, the the these are supposed to be for first world countries, but England as well as Saudi Arabia as well as other the other countries I discussed. I have a history of of uh, of being. Um, oppressors, you know, in, in regards to England, we could always all go back to the, well, the half the, half the world, the oppressed half the world anyway. So I guess you could pick, you know, it's kind of, you could pick and choose what country that you could think that they had, you know, that, that, that they had uh, oppressed. Um, the Israeli-Palestinian kind of issue. Then we have another one. And then we have um, how Saudi Arabia was, as uh, they were subjected to England. So, and now, they're doing the same thing to the Eritreans that are coming through. So it's, it's, it's really, it's a shame. And it's also, you know, learned behavior too, you know, as like, as that is a policy and it's, it's, it's just, it's not right. It's not how you're going to integrate the citizens because now, you know, the, the years ago in the nineties, you had, um, uh, and I'm only speaking for England right here. They had, they had, there was a riots in, um, North of England in regards to, um, uh, South Asian people. And now the prime minister of England is from South Asia. So don't think for a second that these people are not going to, that, that are not American or they're not a, that part of your country. They are the fabric of which our country is built upon. And being, you know, being, being first generation Irish, there has been many Irish, uh, well, I mean, there's many, actually many Irish uh, uh, presidents who have Irish blood in them and the current, the, as well as the current uh, president, uh, Biden, who is, uh, his mother is, uh, his family is actually from Ballina, Mayo, where my parents are from. A um, little shout out to May County Mayo. Um, but anyway, so point being is the, there are, uh, just, I, I, I Got my, got my fingers on the statistics, but in regards to how many people have come since uh, 
since we have we started this crisis there's there has been um a huge amount of of trying to figure out what is the right solution. Now, I heard on the news yesterday, they were talking about having these 10 cities, not just in one area, but throughout throughout the cities and throughout um, each ward. Now, what I can speak from our ward itself is that's not going to fly. So we need to find a comprehensive solution about how we are going to be able to take care of not only our recent migrants, but also our legacy um, uh, Chicagoans who have been neglected and disenfranchised. Disenfranchised, thank you. Um, <laughs> like I said, it was a busy day yesterday. Uh, the uh yeah, but yeah, yeah so on the reels tim tell them why you were busy yesterday I, I, <laughs> that story needs to be told brother you're a warrior um oh, it's just brought it up uh at seven in the morning i usually i go to bimbo bakery and i pick up um uh bread and snacks for uh for different pantries and then i went to saint bernadette's so they can make um sandwiches for the port ministry and then i gave uh snacks to um Another for another person who is uh, handling District Seven for their food, then went to St. Thomas More and unloaded all of our um, the rest of the uh, of the contents of the uh, of our my the the car, which is snacks and bread. And then I went to our Saturday morning clinics that we have in um, by the police station. We have a collection. We have a, a some doctor volunteer doctors and nurses that we are able to see everybody and like last weekend that we had 26 cases of lice we made sure we got that all taken care of. we picked up medicine to make sure that was all taken care of we, we had we have many different um ailments that have kind of gone through a lot of our uh our new rivals and we want to make sure that that they're fed that they're able to sleep get off the floor from sleeping well when they sleep by having air mattress and such and that they're healthy um and that they're uh, clothed. So the healthy bit is um, we pick up the the cost of over the counter drugs and prescription drugs. And now I have worked with a couple of groups who have uh, with homeless, and we've said we certainly asked them that this is open not just to migrants to anybody who's able to come that they want to come and be able to will handle whatever prescriptions they need. And that's we and that's we have to involve the county in that regard. So that was and then I went back to Bimbo to get a second load of. Um, of uh, bread and snacks went to a service that was being um, held at the a garden adjacent to the police station where they were having a service uh, where it was a uh, African American church was meeting with the migrants and it was one of those events we were trying to uh, merge where our black and brown brothers could uh, could uh, praise uh, the Lord in in fellowship and not being separated. So we brought food to bring to uh, that could be shared with that group with that group. And then there was um, after I left there, I went to um, 112th in um, the, in Roseland. There was a family who was taken out of the shelter and it's or staying in an apartment. They don't have access to food. There is no. So I brought them. Um, cases of ground beef and cases of, of meat and cases of uh, fruits and vegetables that I picked up at our warehouse in Pilsen. So, um, that's yeah, so lot. that was most of what I did. Uh, tonight. That's, and see, see what I'm saying, y'all? Here's the, I mean, oh my gosh, I was just in church and one of the songs was, you don't have to do great things. You can do simple things with great love. And that's true, but I think you're doing great things. I'm learning from you right now, just building, thinking about how to do mutual aid at Harold Washington, how to do mutual aid uh, on 18th and State, which by the way, I found out there's a bunch of volunteers hopping out, but you know, I still think they could use a little more more support. Um, I think it's beautiful. That that narrative, this story you just told, not to say, yo, Tim, 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 but <laughs> come on now. And anyway, sorry. So please, please continue. I do have a big mouth. I apologize. <laughs> no, no, it's a, uh, it's not, you know, I, I, I bounced around a lot, but it was our medical team that, 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 you know, is able to see the, the, the uh, migrants and be able to, and we have an interpreters that help to get the, to make sure that we may get them the right, um, 
to get them the right uh, to be able to be communicate okay and then uh, the really really beautiful thing about this and i'll go back to what we were talking about is it seems that whatever the situation occurs the person who is most needed is presented in that situation we found just by random that we had a medical translator in our group who helps us every saturday and the likelihood of finding a medical translator would be it's just unheard of. But here we had somebody who's actually qualified in what we were looking to do. So it was uh, that was really a wonderful find. And we had other um, teachers and uh, we had teachers who were more familiar with, um, with because over their years of teaching, I had became uh, experts on lice and that. So they were able to help uh, to mitigate the lice uh, uh, situation. We had uh, we have teach uh we have nurses and medical professionals who speak spanish and english and then um that are able to help us get through this so it's really uh it's not no tim 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 it's really it's a group of of we we when i we created the uh group um 19th word mutual aid we had we had called it neighbors helping neighbors and it truly is neighbors helping neighbors in order to make sure that we are able to help our newest neighbors to to be able to provide the needs they have but mind you in the same sense these same neighbors are helping us and helping themselves like we have a we have in the basement of a church we have clothes that's all lined up and who's but it's it's the the ladies from the um from the station who are the ones who are doing the sorting and putting it on the names on it and and uh, and being able to get these on the shelves and everything so it's people who are actually are are really they want to help themselves we have a really terrible system in regards to work permits where you the work permits are not allowed this is a federal issue a work permits are not allowed um for our for the asylum seekers they uh they need to apply for asylum which many of them believe they did but they have not yet and they can't uh, apply for a work permit until 150 days after they apply for asylum there's no, there's no reason to have 150 days after a, a sale. And no, you're asking people them, will fucking start by that point. I'm sorry, dude. That's fucking outrageous. It's terrible. And um, and there was um, uh, Dick Durbin and um, uh, uh, Governor Pritzker and Brandon Johnson. Uh, he was last week was asking uh to uh, President Biden to put together a um an executive order to allow that to 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 waive the 150 days now speaking on on my behalf i we there's other mutual aid organizations in other cities other sanctuary cities so-called sanctuary cities that we're trying to link up and have a united voice for such federal uh issues such as this so we're working on that uh trying to get our voices to be united behind what is really needed for for people to thrive and give them the dignity so give them the opportunity to work so that was that's a major piece um, of what tim i'm sorry to be rude but i think now we can actually um go into question and answers if that's oh. okay first of all let sure, me just sorry. say that this fuck i'm sorry i gotta stop cussing this presentation was beautiful and i learned some key lessons though that i think i'm gonna take with me as i support 18th and straight and whoever these activists are, it's important that the mutual aid be opened up, not just to asylum seekers, but to people in the neighborhood who may need support, no judgment, whether they're homeless or not, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think that's a very important lesson. I'm telling this because I'm going to, I want to remember what I'm saying. The other thing that's also very important is that the people that are seeking, like, what's that whole metaphor about teach somebody how to fish or whatever the shit. Yes. Yes. That the people that are seeking the help also are involved in the process of the mutual aid so it's not some top-down bullshit hierarchy or some fucking charity thing that it's people helping each other as neighbors would right i love that philosophy i love that human lens and there was another important um thing but i've also had a very long week as i was talking to you earlier so it's been a very long mom week for me um but i did have a question because and and then lou lou is our comrade lou is here with us if he wants to ask explain what the, what is the city key what is that? Is that the 150 days or is that something different? Uh, that is actually different. Uh, city key is important. And it's a lot of people put a lot of importance on it. It's important from the standpoint of being able to um, to get an ID, which 
though it might seem like it's not important, but you can use a CD key ID to open up a bank account. And if you have a bank account, you, if you're getting paid cash, you could put the money into account. You don't have to worry about uh, uh, trying to, you know, keeping it in your shoe or whatever, or being a victim of being robbed and that. So, so th th from that standpoint, it's super important. And that city key, okay, so so I have a, a specific question, and Lou, please feel free to jump in, because as you know, because I looped you in and you were looped in, I was hopping this uh, Venezuelan on woman who who the James, James Ward School, God bless him, had taken four families in to a home, but there's a lot of misinformation about what they can and cannot do, so I've been helping with one of the lead uh, teachers who's been taking care of this one particular family, and so one of the things that we were talking about, and I'm glad I hooked up with you like not hooked up or connected with you. Okay, let's just say it's platonically connected with my Irish brother who I love, love, because he's amazing. Like platonic love. Oh, uh, Jesus love, right? Um, that what happened was that she went to the emergency room at some uh, public hospital or privately owned hospital and they she was told she wasn't gonna get paid. So I was thinking, you know, maybe we're gonna have to do a GoFundMe. Could they do a GoFundMe if they open a bank account with a city key? Can they do a GoFundMe? You yeah, you could do okay. uh can you do a GoFundMe? Which could she do a GoFundMe or could she receive the funds? Well, no, I mean if she if because they have the city key for sure. Yeah, yeah. The husband has an account. He called she called it some kind of account. But technically, if I talked him through it, I could set have him set up their own GoFundMe to pay out those medical bills if things don't work out. But I'm sure it is because you know you're guiding yeah. us because you know, like there's so much confusion. Like, for example, can asylum seekers get Medicaid? Yes, they can they get can, Medicaid. Yes. But they have to apply for it. And she hadn't. Can they get SNAP? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I mean, this is the kinds of things that I don't know what the fuck's going on because I don't know. Um, And I'm like, I don't think I'm that the people can receive. That's good. No. That's the kind of thing that's important to have it. And like, even for this teacher who, so what's happened is that because she didn't speak Spanish, every time there's a question, it gets popped to me, you know? And I think you, you, what you're doing is beautiful. You know, I wish she, I don't know if they don't have the doctors where she's at, but I mean, I, I know that for us, for example, I know transportation is very important too. Yeah. Our, like I was telling this poor woman, pobrecita, she's got an infection. Clearly she's not well. It took me a while to figure out where to send her to get free health care. It's apparently it's Cook County. So I sent her to Dr. Prieto's, uh, um, but there are others. I'm learning that there are these other places that are specifically giving their time to asylum seekers, but we don't know, you know, um, that it would be good to to figure that out because you're right. I think you mentioned the, the Jesus, Mary and Joseph, the way the system is working and not working for people, the way the government is not representing us. And I, and look, I put it on Biden on down to every public official, state, Pritzker, you know, I know what Johnson is trying, but damn it, enough is fucking enough. Because listen, what's gonna happen when they go into these 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 fucking places, these tents that are heated, and we know that COVID is happening, we know that the flu is on the rise, and what's gonna happen if they start to get sick and die? Who's gonna take care of them, Tim? Because it's not gonna be the government. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, that's what I'm really worried about. This whole they haven't thought this through. They have not thought this through. You know. Well, I mean, just like we were like you and I had worked on that article in regards to uh, that little girl who um, who was coming to Chicago. They did not have the uh, medical uh, triage at the beginning uh, from her start of her journey journey. Otherwise, they would have picked up on that she was sick and then she had died in Illinois and in and, and Illinois picked up the, the state of Illinois, picked up the cost in regards to it. But the cost of burial is not the cost of the potential we could have had from that little, little girl living a full life and being able exactly. to she, she would have been what four years old on the 25th of august and the thing that i was telling i was telling this pastor actually i was at the funeral you know i was telling you about for norm swenson on, on on um yesterday and he was he was pretty progressive pretty progressive you know unitarian or something dude and you know the, he he came to this conclusion that death was unnecessary there was no reason for that yeah. little girl to die. This could have been, you know what I mean? And that's why Abbott and DeSantis and all these motherfuckers, they should be in jail. I know that LA is suing this, uh, Abbott, but I love this idea of this united force because I also read an article where New York, New York is like, 
crying for help too. And, and um, and instead of getting unity amongst other Democrats and other Republicans, they're like, oh, see, there's a, you got the problem you asked for, deal with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, that is such a dehumanizing thing. But you also raise this beautiful point. The moment we start thinking about statistics and not human beings. Yeah. You know what I mean? But Lou, do you have any questions for Tim? Maybe not. No, um, it's... Uh, yeah, so it's... we've been out like seven minutes and I want to give people an opportunity um, if they watch this on YouTube or whatever. How, how can people support either your mutual aid efforts or what? What's a, do you have a website? I do. Uh, we have a website. It's www.19aid.com. It looks like Lou does have a question. He's got his hand raised. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm on my phone, so it's a little more difficult for me to to operate than when I'm on my computer. Um, and it's not a question so much, but a, co a couple of comments. The first thing is that around this tent cities thing. Um, you know, one of the things is that we have around the city right now groups of tent cities where people are living in the streets and they're forced in a certain sense to when winter comes along to demand more tents or better tents or something like that, uh, as opposed to um, the question of, of real housing. And so we know what what tent cities are like, especially the ones that that people have to do by themselves, where the government doesn't provide anything decent for them to live in. So that's that's point number one. Point number two is what this reminds me of is when I was living in Los Angeles many years ago, uh, the Pope came to visit in downtown Los Angeles and in order to prepare for the Pope's visit, the city of Los Angeles cleared out the homeless who were living in, in on the streets in downtown LA and put them in a camp uh, on Alameda Street in tents, in the heat, in the intense heat. And it was just disgusting. They did not really take care of the people at all. It was just getting them out of the way. And so that's the sort of thing that I think about when I think of the the proposal for tent cities. I don't think that really is a solution at all when we're when we really need to be talking about housing as a right, not uh, you know not so, some sort of internment camps as, as Tim pointed out. Yep. The other thing, the other thing I wanted to say was what this reminds me of when we're talking about this is a humanitarian crisis. These are yeah. human beings we're talking about. I think of the uh, the the sanitation worker strike in Memphis many years ago, when Martin Luther King was alive. We went to to march on that picket line just before he was killed, and there's an iconic photograph from that uh, that march with people carrying signs saying "I am a man," which really meant "I am a human being." treat me like a human being yeah. don't treat me like a dog and that that was carried forward i think to when black lives matter started people you know made this you know foolish kind of thing about all lives matter versus black lives matter but black lives matter means black human beings black people are human beings and the same thing is true here when we're talking about the asylum seekers we're talking about human beings we're not talking about dogs we're not and, I'm not, and this is no uh pejorative about dogs but we're <laughs> not we're talking about we're talking about human beings here and really talking about one class of human beings that needs to work together toward solving all of our problems so i i, I want to commend uh tim for all the work that he's doing and thank you for that. And just say that uh, we're really at a, a new stage in history where we really look look at this thing in an international setting and yeah. realize that we're we're all together and have to do that. I guess the last thing I want to say 
is is to really just commend you for that international outlook because again this is going on around the world we really don't have anywhere nearly the problems that some people do in terms of immigration in terms of asylum seekers where millions of people are on their borders nevertheless we have a responsibility to take care of the people who are coming into our country so thank you again it's beautiful and you know the it's thing that also pisses me off is like there are plenty of empty houses yeah. plenty of empty buildings plenty of empty lots there's enough for everybody here whether it's a legacy or asylum and that that's a reality right that people don't want to talk about um but Tim, this has been incredibly helpful. I I I I I think uh, I hope to move forward. One of the things that we're planning for y'all who are watching is we we want to do a, a panel. We're gonna set the dates. I'm gonna probably I'm gonna stop recording, but after this, but no, actually, yeah, I'm gonna stop recording in a bit. But we're planning a panel at Harold Washington College. It's gonna be high flex. That means in person and via Zoom to continue to have this discussion and and unite our our uh, efforts. But I, I'm loving this idea of connecting uh state to state. And international, man, I know what's happening in France and England and these other places where the fascists are doing this same shit, if not worse, there to, to completely dehumanize asylum seekers and privatize and ruin public education and healthcare. I mean, it's just, it's terrible, you know? Um, but, uh, but listen, Tim, this has been amazing. Thank you. Um, I, I, uh, I always tell you, you're my, you, I, or I'm saying it now, you, you are my brother, you know, and I raised a historic, the, his, the history of Los San Patricios, who, who um, during the Mexican-American War, Irish soldiers supported uh, Mexico because they connected with them on a Catholic level, you know, working class level. And, and that to me, that to me, I love that history. And they still celebrate. They celebrate Los San Patricios in a, in a little town. I can't remember where. But that kind of international solidarity, bro. That's what we need right now. I mean, through educating, I'm not saying people should pick up arms unless, you know, you're going to win. But, you know, but I think it's important that we continue to have the solidarity and and, and then spread the word, man. I, I learned a lot, a lot today. I learned a lot from your wisdom, even just conversing with you, because not just you, you have street cred, the analysis on point, the, the, your heart is where it should be, man. And I, I think that's beautiful. Okay, I'm going to stop kissing up to you and then stop recording.